On the one side, you've got the people who've just tanked the pound and trashed our economy saying that we need more immigration. And, and yet, probably on this occasion, having a point. And then on the other side, you've got the ones who are probably right also when they say, well, we're the party of Brexit. We, we're going to annoy all the racists that voted for Brexit and for us if we actually have to start increasing immigration. Just think about that for a minute. That is a distillation of a country on its knees. Right? The people in power are arguing with each other over immigration because half of them know that they need the racists in order to sustain power and the other half know that they need foreign workers to come here in order to have a, 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 a wing and a prayer of the sort of economic growth that the country is in desperate need of. Here's the mad bit. Are you ready for this? I don't think you're ready for this. I think if you're, if you're driving, you better pull over or something. Or maybe sit down. Because this is huge. This is one of the maddest things that's ever happened in British politics. Because they're both right. Increase immigration, you will alienate all the racists who propelled Brexit over the line and the Tories into power. Don't get more foreign workers into this country and you will jeopardise any chance at all of the sort of economic growth that the country needs to see. How mad is that? Just think about how mad that is for a minute. They're both right. So you've got Kemi Badenoch, Suella Braverman on one side saying no to immigration. We don't want any more immigrants. Don't point out their own family past. That ship has sailed. Uh, I, I think it's relevant. They don't. So, you know, on we go. So you've got that branch of the cabinet arguing against immigration because they are also the ones that call themselves anti-woke, which, as we've established on this program, quite often means sympathetic to racist sensibilities. So they, they know that if you actually increase immigration, if these numbers, these visa restrictions come, come down, then the racists are going to be furious. And the thing you have to remember about racism politically is that it is self-harm. It is self-inflicted damage. It is a bigotry, a prejudice, a hatred that transcends self-interest. You hate that foreign person even more than you care about your own interests or your children's futures. That's why Brexit happened, because you were persuaded, not you personally, but people were persuaded to hate the foreigner, the person speaking a foreign language on a train, the, the people in Farage's despicable posters, you were persuaded to hate those people, those non-existent mythical people, more than you cared about your own future, your own interests, your own economic welfare. That's how you pull it off. So they are right, Braverman and Badenoch, and to a lesser extent, I think, Rhys Mogg, who's sort of wobbling between the two positions. That There it is. They are right. You will alienate a huge swathe of your racist base if you increase immigration, if you change the politics, the policies to make it easier for people to come here from overseas. But on the other hand, on the other hand, Kwarteng and Truss are right that if you've got two million vacancies in an economy that's crying out for growth and you do not have people here who are prepared to fill those vacancies, then you have to do something to tempt people from somewhere else to come here. So they are right as well. I'm going to level with you. I hadn't worked that out before I started talking. So it's rather shot the fox of whatever question it was that I was intending to ask you. I hadn't realised that they're both right. I mean, in many ways, they're both wrong. But in the clearest way, they're both right. They know they're going to alienate the racist base by increasing immigration. They know they can't possibly generate growth in a country with two million job vacancies and nowhere near enough people here to fill them unless they get people in from overseas. So what, what the hell am I going to ask you now? We've already done our Marvin Gaye topic for the day, haven't we? We've already had our what's going on. It's 14 minutes after 12. I don't know what to ask you. What do you think? Should I say, who's going to win? Who's going to win? Who's going to win? The anti-immigration lot in the current Conservative cabinet or the pro-immigration lot? As a Brexit voter, half of you told me that you just wanted controlled immigration. You didn't care what the overall numbers were. You just wanted more rules and regulations. The other half told me you categorically wanted fewer people to come here. But remember, everybody knew exactly what they were voting for. Even as they voted for two completely different things, it was absolutely condescending and outrageous to suggest that there was no earthly way. Both camps were going to get what they, what they wanted. So there it is. There it is. Braverman and Bedenock are correct. This will alienate racist support. And, and okay, if you find racism a, an uncomfortable badge to wear, let's just say anti-immigration then. It, well, of course it will. If you're anti-immigration and they're saying we need more immigration, you're going to be very cross. 
But Kwarteng and Trust are right as well when they say we're in a country with two million job vacancies. If we can't get people to come here from somewhere else, we're never going to have the growth that we keep promising and talking about. I haven't got a topic. <laughs>